Welcome back. So we're all set. Let's get over to Richmond Park and to our commentary team of Damien Lynch and first Will Downing. Haven't we met somewhere before? We're barely six weeks into the season and it's the third meeting already of St. Paris Athletic and Sligo Rovers. Pats won 1-0 here to claim the newly re-established President's Cup. Sligo were 2-0 winners at the end of March up in the northwest in the first leg of this Satanta Sports Cup semi-final. Six changes for St. Patrick's Athletic from their 1-0 win over Shamrock Rovers here at the weekend. In come Foran, Oman, Fitzgerald, Lynch, Kavanagh and Quigley. Out go Bulger, Byrne, Fagan, Killian Brennan, Kenny Brown and Sean Hoare. Brennan has a hamstring injury. Byrne, Fagan and Brown are available to come off the bench. But James Chambers isn't after being sent off in the first leg. Sligo Rovers make one change from their encouraging one all draw at Cork on Friday. Caelan Spillane, recently signed from the Rebels, replaces Jeff Henderson. Danny North, top scorer in this season's competition, is on the bench. Kieran Janali netted a turn his cross at the weekend. Captain Alan Keane scored inside the opening minute at home to Drogheda. Both draws having lost their four previous league games. 1-0. Well, Joseph Ndo, who's been a star in this competition before, he hasn't won it before. Match referee is Derek Tomney, the assistant to Mark Gavin and Kieran Delaney. Goal line officials Rob Rogers and Tomas Connolly. And the fourth official is Robert Clark. So, Damien Lynch, this is definitely a game to look forward to. Yeah, really, look, really looking forward to the game tonight, Will. Perfect conditions, better than what we've experienced over the last couple of weeks going to games. Um, I think when you look at the pitch, it's out there, it's perfect for both sides. And I'm expecting a really attacking game of football tonight. Both sides are lining up 4-3-3. You heard the interview earlier on with Ian Barraclough, he said he wants to go and win this game. And I think there's a bit of a statement that they want to put out here. Both sides, I think neither side has really hit the ground running. They've probably had a, a slower start than they hoped for. But as Barraclough has said, they've played well. But they really want to capitalise that and get into a cup final. Third meeting of the season of our managers, Ian Barraclough. And happy birthday to Liam Buckley. The hard work never ends. The league winning manager looking to guide St. Paris Athletic to their first Satanta Sports Cup. Having lost the finals of Bohemians in 2010, which is a step further than Sligo have ever got. But they do lead 2 0 from the first leg from uh, three weeks ago, where James Chambers sitting on the right hand side was dismissed for two yellow cards so he's missing from this second leg Pats two down but with a big fight back in sight have scored four goals in the last two games netted five here in the last home game in the competition that was against Balnamala Well, nobody's played more semi-finals than Sligo Rovers in this competition. Nobody's lost more semi-finals in this competition than Sligo Rovers. But the manager, Ian Barclough, has said, pre-match team talk, very short, very simple. Here's your night to make history. Same long for Joseph Ndo, who, despite all the great clubs he's been with, has never actually won this competition before. And well, I don't think you can underestimate how important a, a game this is. Tonight. When we looked at Dundalk a few weeks back, they were struggling a bit of league form when they came into the Santa Cup and they ended up getting a good result. And it sort of kick their season on both sides. If you can get silverware in the cupboard by May, it takes a bit of pressure off from a manager's perspective. And both of them will feel the pressure this year because one of them's the league champions, the other one is the last league champions before St. Pat's. And both of them will, want, will need to have silverware in the cabinet by the end of the year in order to justify that they've done a good job. Well, it was a slender 1-0 victory for Pats here at the weekend against Shamrock Rovers. Killian Brennan with the winning goal from the spot. It's like they're trying to recapture the form that saw them win the league title two seasons ago. They did lose four in a row, but all by one goal to nil. 
And Ian Barraclough has said there's been nothing wrong with the performances this season, they just haven't been able to finish. Does that change tonight? Well, here goes Ndo. Good drive forward, wide for Jalali. Ndo in a good central position again. Paul O'Connor's there also. Sent in by Alan Keane, but not far. It's a real thumping strike in the end from Ross Gaynor. Seemed to come off his colleague Aaron Green. Took a bit of deliberating from Kieran Delaney on this near side, but it is a blue ball. Bit of pace on that, wasn't there, Will? He came onto it perfectly, he just caught it well, it just hits us on the back there. Unlucky, but it's a bit of a sloppy start from St. Pat's when you look at this here. I know it's still very early, but a couple of times they've got on the ball, been a loose pass from Kavanagh here out in the wing, and they just haven't really got going, they haven't got out their own half. I think it's a night where they really have to play high tempo. They have to get the, the form up, they have to... And look, at, again, another sloppy pass from full-back here. And Sligo pressing and Doe with the dummy at first and then the quick little flick layoff to Gaynor. Excellent ball wide. Jalali's got plenty to aim for in the middle. Green has just arrived. Ledwith is there too. It's being held up successfully by Lorcan Fitzgerald at the moment. Fitzgerald and well there. Very exciting to see Jalali again tonight. Any time I see him play, he's a really exciting player in the league. Gets on the ball, takes on people. He's, he's a throwback to the olden days where every time he gets the ball, he tries to do something special with it. Sometimes that can be frustrating, but more often than not, he he's actually manages to pull it off. So, really exciting player. Really looking forward to see how he gets into the game this evening. Ball at the moment is very much trapped over on that far side. Keane, who scored two games ago very early on inside the opening minute at home to Drogheda. Not down by Green. No real support there alongside him. Corley managed to get the foot in. He's come out towards Green again. Excellent ball. Well, shades of David Silva almost in front of Joseph and as he arrived at the far post. Needed a touch to score. Sloppy here again from Derek Foran, just takes a touch too heavy there. Corley does really well to close down, lays out the green and it's a fantastic pass. What a break already as Pats are streaming forward with Lee Lynch, great pacey player. And he really is bedded in so well already into this St. Patrick's athletic side, just signed from Sligo Rovers. I think everywhere he's been so far, he's really impressed. This was dynamic. Yeah, he's one of the most exciting players in the league, in my opinion. Young players, I think he's a great opportunity to make a, a, a really good career out of the game. But I think when you look at Lynch, I think he's been one of the key signings for me. Very interesting to see how he develops under playing alongside the likes of Keith Fahey in there, and Forrester as well. When you look at two young lads who want to get on the ball, want to learn the game, and what better fella to have around you than Keith Fahey? He's been there, he's done that, and I think I was chatting to Fat once or twice since he's come back, and he's very relaxed and enjoying his football here now, so the lads can learn an awful lot from him. Well, he scored twice soon after coming back. In the Leinster Senior Cup against Dundalk, and in the President's Cup here against Sligo Rovers. Cross by Lynch. It's a really uh, aggressive start by Sligo, really pushing on in the middle of the park, not giving Pats any time whatsoever. By the way, in terms of this St. Pats formation tonight, we've got Liam Buckley having Lorcan Fitzgerald at left back and Ian Birmingham further up that left hand wing. Yeah, it's an unusual one. Uh, Burma wouldn't be used to playing left wing. Any time I played him, he was always left back, and pretty much throughout his career. I can't remember too many times where he has played in the wing, but like uh, most left footers, they can pretty much adapt to it. He's a clever player, Burma, and he's well able to get to, to play that position. Corley laying it back for McMillan. Uh, something for Sligo. A uh, surprise selection, perhaps, that they've had to deal with, and they've dealt with it sufficiently well so far. Fahey continuing the run. Keith Fahey, good strike, fine save, Gary Rogers. 
Fantastic play there by Kifai. Gets on the ball, plays a 1-2. Lovely one to a first here. He just takes a touch and he doesn't quite catch it 100%, but it's a really good effort and Rodgers does well to hold on to it. Some great interchanging play there by Fahim Forrester though. We'll, we'll see more of that this evening. That's an excellent ball forward by Gaynor. Chipped almost precisely by O'Connor. It fell to and Doe all the same. Four and with the block. Back towards Jalali again. Diving header away by Ken O'Man as Sligo look to build. A goal from them. And we don't go to extra time. It would need a 2-0 win in the 90 minutes from St. Pat's for that to happen. Always seems to be a preference from sides to have the second leg at home. Fahi played it out very well. Get a bit of speed and dynamism away. Forward by Conor McCormick. We couldn't locate Lynch. I think it's an interesting point when you're talking about home advantage in the second leg. I know when I was playing, you always wanted to have the second leg at home because irrespective of what the score is in the first, when you get them back home, you, you have a chance. You know, if, if Patrick got the Sligo two down tonight, you wouldn't really give them much hope. But here, if they get a bit of form, get, get the ball moving, get an early goal, you never know what can happen. Quigley came back to launched long for Forrester again. Lynch arriving just on the edge of the area. Forrester held up well by Kalen Spillane. Quigley. Support from McCormick and lots of space over on this near-hand side. Chance to cross on the right, it's a good one too. Put a lot of pressure in and that was almost the first one back. Lynch's header was spot on, but what a header off the line. Absolutely fantastic play here. McCormick gets on a fantastic ball into the box. Rogers, he should have put more distance on that. And Lynch should really score that. He's only six yards out, a bit more power on it. But fair play to Ed McMillan covering off his goalkeeper's error there. But really good play from Quigley getting the ball out wide. Really quick ball into the box. Delivery could have been better, and it could have been more better placed. Lynch with the clearance to find Jalali. But that header I was right in line with, and Lynch got it absolutely perfectly. But what a header off the line by Evan McMillan. I think it was a difficult one to put a bit of pace on the ball because it was kind of a dead ball when it bounced and he had to put all his effort in to get any sort of pace on it. Another opportunity here. Good one over the top, aimed for Daryl Kavanagh, whose memories of the semi-finals last season would have been bitter, losing ones. Beaten with Cork City by Shamrock Rovers right at the end for a free kick that he'd given away. Had it not been for that, he'd have scored the winning goal. An end to end starter will, isn't it? Both sides getting on it. Both sides looking to get into the last third and make things happen. Morgan <laughs> Fitzgerald on the far side. Here's Fahi. Excellent evening for football. Let's see if we have some excellent football to match. It was an excellent ball by Fahi to find Ian Birmingham on the far side. And the captain's armband for St. Patrick's Athletic. Alan Keane doing likewise for Sligo. Also down that far wing, Jalali. Bit of a hopeful ball for Daryl Cavan in the end. He was out number three to one. Look at formations there, it gets very crowded in the middle of the park with pretty much both sides having three players in the middle of the park who want to get on the ball. And I think at times there's a lot of joy out in the wings here. You'll see Gaynor pushing on and it's up to the Pats wingers to actually track that. But I think you saw McCormick already putting a, a decent ball into the box from wide position. I think that tonight both sides, if they can move the ball wide, there's really a real opportunity out there. That 
It's only gone as far as Chris Forrester, the clearance from Rogers. Forrester with support from Cavanagh. Had the chance to strike on the turn. Important challenge by Ledwith to get it away ahead of Lee Lynch. Wide for McCormick again. Brought across with Mark Quigley from Shamrock Rovers, but not getting a free kick. And Doe with a chance to bring it away. Green didn't have a lot of time to rest in his laurels. 13th game of the season for St. Patrick's Athletic. These two involved in six competitions this season. League and Cup and League Cup, Satanta Sports Cup, the President's Cup they've already played, and Europe for both. You look at Quigley here when he gets on the ball. He's great at using his body here and he should probably move the ball off. To me, that's a free kick. Connor holds on to him there, doesn't let him get him around him. But at times, Quigley can be frustrated like that. Instead of just moving the ball, giving it to someone else in a better position. Given away, O'Connor found green. Here's a doe. And Jalali running onto it. The first touch was too heavy. But he was still allowed a second one. And that will be a corner kick to Slager Rovers over on the far side. And Doe's getting a lot of space at times, and he's, he's very clever, picking up really good space, but Jalali just takes a heavy touch there. He does well then to win the corner out of it. Good defender by a man. Head away by a man. So it was back towards his own corner flag again. Forrester managed to clip the clearance away to save the corner kick. Here's Corley. Excellent ball into the area. Clark with a punch away. The pressure was well off. The break is now on for St. Patrick's Athletic. Fahey plays it up long. Lynch has got pace. Not enough this time. Gator beat him to it. Away by Rogers. Great chance for Pats to break there. Keith Fahey should have probably stayed on the ball and actually committed the defender a little bit more. He probably had 25 yards ahead of him in space. And if he'd have stayed on it, put it, opened up his legs, Gaynor would have had to make a decision to go and tackle him or else stay with his man. Well, the flag's got up against Kavanagh, but the last touch was not from a Pats player. Came off Ledwith, and that should have played Kavanagh onside. I think when the ball's played diagonally, I think he's in the offside position previous to that. But from Kavanagh's perspective, he shouldn't be standing there. He should looking across the line. He should just step a yard to the other side, and he'll be onside all day. He, he's fast enough to get the other side of the defender if he has to. It's with Green. Excellent ball by Green inside. It's cut out by McCormick. Green does very well here, just not makes four and tries to blade in. McCormick does very well, very calm, stays in the ball and just let plays it out of, out of trouble. It's Fahi. Now locates Chris Forrester. Had support in the middle, so good ball inside for Quigley, who went down, but it's gathered by Gary Rogers. Well, Quigley was the player involved. And Derek Tobney was, in fairness, right by the incident. Great play from Forrester there, though. It's never a penalty. Quigley just loses his footing, and McMillan just stands up. But previous to that, Forrester getting on the ball, a lot of pace on his run, checks back, and it's really good play from him. Overhead kick by Ndo, and it's claimed by Clark. I'm sure that was intended as a pass. A previous ball for uh, Kavanagh, by the way, where he was flagged offside. Tottenham gave away a goal like that a few weeks ago. 
way by Rogers. Birmingham flying down the left hand side. Found a way past Keane as well. It's a really good battle that tonight now. Birmingham versus Keane. Both got good legs on them. Keane in first, and he's a pure athlete, gets up and down the park. But with Birmingham playing out of position, it'll be interesting to see how he copes as the game goes on. His, his natural reaction will to keep dropping deeper and deeper into that left back position. A really good turn there. Ledworth got the nod on and tried to get the pace down this left hand side. Pat's still fifth in the table. They've only lost one this season in the league. And this really should have given them the lead. Great opportunity for Lee Lynch, but what a header off the line. Evan McMillan maneuvering himself into the right place. Sligo won their opening league game of the season at home to a loan by two goals to one, and they haven't won one since. But in no game so far this season have they conceded more than one goal, but they find themselves down in 11th. And I think that's the that's the sort of rut you can get in, Will, when you're playing in, in leagues. Certain seasons just don't go for you, and you're look, just looking for some sort of break. Fantastic ball there by Fahey. And McCormick was always stretching to keep it in, though. But, but that's where competition like this, Will, is, is really good, because it's kind of away from your league form. You're already up, you get to a final, all of a sudden there's a bit of atmosphere in the club, a bit of atmosphere in the town, and things can turn around. And if you, like that just breeds confidence in a team. Fahey with a cracking ball forward, and Lynch trying to latch onto that. Again denied by his former colleague, Gary Rogers, who again is a former St. Pat's man. In terms of injuries for Sligo at the moment, Gavin Pears is out with a knee injury. Rafa Cortaro with a calf and Seamus Keneally with a groin twinge. Pats without Killian Brennan and Rene Gilmartin with hamstring injuries. Jero O'Brien with a groin strain. Greg Bolger is out but not with the at first fear joke and bro broken jaw that they thought he had at the weekend. James Chambers out suspended. Two ridiculous, ridiculously strong squads, though, aren't they? When you think about the players that are missing tonight. Look at the players they brought in. It's a real thumper from Corley. It's a very good save by Clark. It's actually sloppy play from Clark that sets up the chance, and Corley takes a touch out of his feet. It's a good strike. Clark gets his body behind it. But too many times in this early part of the game, Pats have lost the ball needlessly in their own third. And I think Sligo, at times, if it keeps happening, they'll punish them. They've both had good efforts and targets so far. And Doe, only really green in a forward position at the moment for Sligo. That was quite a sliding challenge from Conor McCormick. It was quite a slide anyway. Green placing it for David Corley. Jalali. Good opportunity. Can Green get there first? Aaron Green scores the away goal. Sligo lead by three. And St. Pat's now need to score four. Absolutely fantastic goal there. Brilliant play by Corley in the middle of the park. He just plays a little true pass. And Green's movement is fantastic. Gets in behind Ford and just finishes off into the bottom corner. But leading up to that, probably three or four passes. A beautiful flick inside here. And Corley gets on the ball, plays two nice little passes, then a really, really special pass in behind. But Jalali gets on the ball. We said it earlier. As soon as he gets on the ball, he makes things happen. And it's a beautiful square ball into the middle. And Green does, takes his time and finishes it into the bottom corner. Absolute uphill battle now for St. Pat's. Well, it was a tremendous finish, and Aaron Green scores his second Satanta Sports Cup goal of all time. Previous one against Crusaders in the previous round. It's his second goal of the season, and they've both come in this competition. And having won the first leg 2-0, the away goal here 
It's all set up for Sligo now. Yen. Kavanagh. Well, they've got a massive mountain to climb now. Kavanagh. That's a well timed, sturdy enough chance by Gaynor to put it out for the corner. Lovely play here. Little, it's actually Green who flicks it around the corner. Cawley plays it out, gets it back off, plays it around the corner, and Jalali just gets in behind. Lorcan Fitzgerald, poor defending. I don't know what he's doing out in the wing. He should just come in tight there to stop the ball in behind him and make the play go outside him. And a very firm, fine claim by Gary Rogers, who gets it out quickly. Aim for Jalali. McCormick making sure. Well, Jalali, an excellent find for the Irish game to come from AFC Wimbledon. McCormick reclaimed for the Irish game by Shamrock Rovers from Triestina in Serie B. I thought he was very good at Rovers as well. Yeah, he had a good season there. Um, really good player, very tidy. But you look at the threat of Jalali there. Rogers gets the ball and takes a look straight away, puts it in behind him. He's, he's always on the, on the shoulder. And as, an, as a defender, it's an absolute nightmare to mark someone like that. You just want him to sit still for maybe 10 minutes and actually just sit and play in his position, but it just doesn't do that. Well, Gaynor was balked sufficiently for Derek Tomney to give the free kick. And though was shaping up to swing it in, instead he teed the shot up instead for Cawley. Pats with the chance to come in the break with Daryl Kavanagh. And very much a one-man show at the moment, Kavanagh's got no support. Could only bring it on as far as he could. Not seen as a foul by Gaynor. Sligo retain it. McMillan for Keane, now Jalali. Sligo enjoying this. Keane with the break down the far side. And they've got a corner. Really good play again there, just putting the ball in behind. And they've done that for most of the first half now. If you look at Kavanagh here, gets on the ball, shows his pace. There's not much in that. I think I think Gaynor does win the ball. He goes over. I think he's entitled to go over there. I think it's just he won the ball and he ended up falling over. No dive that time. But I think overall, Sligo early in this game have tried to put the ball in behind the Pats fullbacks and it's really paid off, particularly with Keane bombing up outside, Jalali, and on this side, a couple the both sides of the park is working really well for them. And Doe. Uh, Try to shield it, but this time it was uh, an easy rob. Now quickly, one of those six changes for Pats going into the game, and it's three on two. And here goes Keith Fahey. He has the support, but he still has the ball. Sligo brought the reinforcements back. Quigley. Didn't work. Frustrating that there from Pats' perspective. Keith Fahey does it very well, opens his legs up, and he just can't get... He takes a touch there, takes another touch, he's just trying to look up here now. And McMillan does very well to put him off. Fai just plays it out to Quigley and he should actually look to the back post because Lee Lynch has made a good runner at the back post and is free. Instead he went for the shot and it was a poor effort in the end. Well, the creativity of Fai has been a major fillip to St. Patrick's Athletic this season. They've got the season back on track after Four games without a win, two draws, two losses. Lost 4-1 here to Dundalk, but they've won two since then. Ledworth managed to pull it back. It's Joseph and Doe. It's a thumper. It's Sligo for the final. 2-0 on the night. 4-0 in aggregate. Joey and Doe, super goal. Fantastic goal there from Sligo. And Joseph and Doe, he's been finding space all evening. Green does really well here. Nice little ball around the corner. And it's a good pullback. 
Joseph just takes a touch over his foot and blasts it home. Great finish, but you'd have to question the marking there from St. Pat's. I'd say four or five times in this first half, and Doe has found space just in that hole in front of the back four. And he's picked up the ball and he's played some nice little passes through, but you see tonight just the last point there. He gets on and finishes it well. And Pat's, as I said, the last time was a mountain to climb, but it's really over now at this stage. Well, you have to kind of, sorry, Willie, you kind of have to be careful now from a Pat's perspective and say, you don't want to make it embarrassing. This is one of your main challengers, and they've already put down a bit of a marker here. Four nil over two legs is not is not a nice feeling. And this is by and large the same Sligo team that started down in Cork on Friday night, and they took the lead in that game as well. Another bumper crowd, over five thousand. Pat's got a great crowd here Friday night against. Uh, Shamrock Rovers in the Dublin Derby. Lynch. Now here's Undo. Keane's block. Undo's composure. And that superb Undo goal. Just about makes it secure. That pretty much is that. Pats now need to score five. Did against Balna Mallard. That was a different story. Lynch tried to break through. McCormick and the pass he was intricate but the wall was a firm blue one couldn't find a way past Gaynor Jalali couldn't control and Oman cleared it if you look again Will in the, just Jalali just comes in off the line finds that bit of space just in front of the back four and Fitzgerald should really come in off the line there because there's no one outside him he should come in tight and actually pick up Jalali and stop the ball going into him and crowd the play out on this side. Instead, he's actually staying in his position and giving them an outball. But I think from the same pass perspective here tonight now, you're 4-0 you're down over, you're not going to win the game. And Liam Buckley must say to himself, maybe make some changes. Look at at least making it realistic and a, a, a scoreline that, that you can be proud of, maybe 2-2, maybe 2-1, but certainly you don't want to start conceding more goals because that just breeds negativity into the dressing room and nobody wants that. Back pass was a bit slight, but Clark dealt with it. There was also, prior to that, uh, an immensely meaty challenge. It is a long football night. Premier League Central 10-15 on this channel with all of the weekend's highlights. And what highlights they were. What highlights tonight from a Sligo point of view already. 2-0 up by the half-hour mark. And Keith Fahey is down. Might he be a marked man in the league this season? With all of the you know, finesse that he enjoyed, and he was a Premier League player for quite a while with Birmingham City and a League Cup winner as well. Certainly, I think when you're coming to play against them, you'll say to yourself, this is a player. You certainly want to stop him playing and put, maybe put one on, to on top of him. I don't think there's any malicious players in the league that's going to go out and try and put, like, intentionally try and injure him, but he's in, he's in a bit of pain there. It looked like a challenge that just caught him on the ankle. And it I don't know if he'll actually come on for that. To be fair, it looked like his challenge. Yeah, like it wasn't much in it. He goes it, but go back to your question: Is he a marked man? I think, for the right reasons, he's a marked man. He's got he's the best player in the league over the last ten years, I think, and he's back playing in the league now. So, when players are coming to play against him, they'll all want to do well against him. But similar to the way Joseph Doe has been for the last number of years when he's been in the league, he's probably been one of the best players, and he's been able to cope with it. And I've no doubt Keith Fahey will do the same. Well, it's wide open for O'Connor here. It was almost wide open for a second for Sligo again, but Derek Foran got in the way. Well, he's still over on the far side, but I'm not sure if he'll last much longer. There are various pieces of paper out, and he will hobble back on for the time being. It's great to see him back in the league. Great to see Stephen McPhail back as well.
Always positive to see prime talent coming home. Quality ball launch forward, pressure being put on Lorcan Fitzgerald again. It's shot well here for O'Connor, who skied it in the end. But Sligo are really putting immense pressure on Pats here, and they want more. They're not satisfied with what they have. Pats aren't sure whether to close down in the last third of the pitch or actually sit off, and they're actually doing neither at the moment, giving Sligo a bit of time on the ball. And great diagonal pass there from Spillane out wide, and they're putting a bit of pressure on Fitzgerald in the left-back position there. But all around, I think it's been a fantastic start to the game by Sligo. They well deserve their, their lead at this stage. There is concern about Keith Fahey from St. Paulo's Athletic, but they haven't sent anybody warming up. Forward by Ken O'Man. Long by McMillan. Fahey again, trying to run off his injury. Forrester. Now here's McCormick. All Pats can try and do is get back into the second leg at least, if not the tie. O'Connor back for Corley. Forrester slid in on Ledwith, but Ledwith got there first. Green short for Undo, who's now got three Satanta Sports Cup goals in his career. It's a surprise that it's that figure. We do have the all-time top scorer on the pitch, and Mark Quigley with 12. Fahey's really struggling in the middle of the park there, Will. He's hobbling around, he's not actually closing down. I think he won't be on for too much longer when you look at it. Why risk him at this stage now? Got on the ball there, though. Got a good positive pass forward. Led with a cross. Here's Green. So far, it's all Sligo. Excellent ball by Green. And Ledwith is in. Great chance to make a three. Bring it away as McCormick. Well, it's a good end-to-end -end game. And Sligo have got things right at the opposite end so far. Just so easy for Sligo, getting on the ball, passing it around. They'll come back out the open side of the pitch now. And just making it the pitch so big for St. Pat's, they just can't get near them. Looks like Sligo, after five attempts in the semi-finals of this competition, have finally got it right across the two legs. Good chance this was for Danny Word with Great chance here, but really poor defender from Conor McCormick there. He's standing out in the line. And the ball, he's actually given the, the Sligo player a chance to play the ball in behind them instead of coming in tight and making the ball go out in front of him. Poor defending by McCormick, but full credit to uh, Leber, get, Leber getting on the ball there. And the keeper comes out, smothers it, and it's a good save. Could have really had another goal there. Oh, 
Call it. So much movement forward and blue for Sligo and Keane had come wide again. Just went beyond him, went beyond uh, Daryl Cavan who'd pulled back. Well, Ian Barclough told his side before the game they had a great chance of making proper history and they're doing it now. It's great play from Green, they just plays it in behind and they've really linked up well, both sides of the park tonight for Sligo. Both wingers and full-backs have got on the ball, one stays behind, one, one gets on the overlap and I think overall that's what's been the difference in the game. Sligo players willing to run into spaces and, and make selfless runs at times and move the ball really quickly. Well, they've got four in the area, the block was by O'Connor and it's a third corner for St. Patrick's Athletic, but it's the first from over on the far side there left. And is it another losing semi-final for Daryl Cavanagh? It's not a huge amount of movement. It was headed away by Aaron Green and the floated effort in the end was too high. <laughs> well, hard to tell with the... Uh, body language but he got a big knock in his challenge on Undo 10 minutes ago and been a couple of passes through him since but he's been largely out of the game yeah, he's not moving well at all in the middle of the park I think when he hit that even his face you could see right up straight down green three all around Sligo Get your tickets ready for the 10th of May. You're on your way to the Satanta Sports Cup final. It's 5 0 in aggregate. It is a rout. An absolute rout now, isn't it? And when, you, when we said that, it's a fantastic ball here from College. He's so much time, though. Great diagonal open green. Foran's looking across the playoff side instead of tracking the man. Takes his time and he finishes it very well. I'm wondering, could Clark have come out and closed the angle a little bit more? But in fairness to him, he was left isolated. He had all the time in the world, Green just takes his touch, and that's two great goals from him this evening. A lot of composure in front of the, in front of the goal. But I think leading up to it, Will, there's so much time in the middle of the park from a, from a Sligo perspective. Liam Buckley must be looking at it. Now, I know Keith Fahey is struggling with a bit of a knock there, but you either if that's the case, you're not going to close down. You drop off and you match the runners. You don't leave a runner go when there's no, when there's no one closing down the ball. And it's, overall, it's been a, a sloppy sort of 30, 37, 38 minutes from St. Pat's overall. That he was just aware, right of the death, that Green was behind him. He's got two now, three this season. One behind Danny North in the scorer's chart this season. 3-0 in the night, 5-0 in aggregate. That he denied by Ledwith, but still managed to get it through towards Lee Lynch. Alan Keane reacted quickly enough, and Keane will come away with it. Well, it's been plain sailing so far for Sligo Rovers, who are performing as well as they could have expected. They'll meet in the league in a few weeks' time, four games' time. Sligo of UCD at home, Bowes away and Limerick away before entertaining Pats up at the showgrounds. Two meetings for Pats in a row with Athlone and both the league and the Leinster Senior Cup before that. Well, Pats once did beat Sligo 4-1 in a semi-final. Sligo have turned it around very well and it's struck well over the top in the end by Keith Fahey. Bit of frustration in that shot there. Fahey just tries to get on it. Let's fly from about 25, 30 yards out and just got over the bar. But again, it's just frustration. You can see it on his face and pretty much across a lot of the Pats players' faces. They know how poor they've been probably in the first half. 
And you're coming out in the second half now, 5-0 down, aggregate thinking this is going to be a long 45 minutes. I was hit straight into the crowd by Gary Rogers, just to make sure very quickly. Well, remember, Derry did this to Shamrock Rovers, 3-0 up at Tallah Stadium in the semi-final two years ago, and they ended up facing Crusaders in that decider. Crusaders, after winning a pulsating semi-final on penalties against Sligo. I wonder will there be many changes made at half-time for both managers when you think about it. Sligoff stuck pretty much with the same team. It's not been long since the last game, so it's a perfect opportunity for Barrow Club to make some changes. Well, it was only Caelan Spillane who came in from that draw down in Cork. Incentive is there realistically for Ian Barrow Club to make a few changes at half-time because St. Patrick's Athletic need to score six. That's the situation they've got themselves into here. Launch four by Quigley, good ball, Lee Lynch is in here. Well, we're tired to prevent him from going out for a goal kick, but it's a throw instead. It's a decent ball in for Quigley here, clever run, just gets in behind. And good defending in the Elvis plan, comes across and he just prevents the goal kick. Here's Keith Fahey. It's away by Keane, out for the throw. And Doe almost gave it away, but there was no ricochet in favour of St. Patrick's Athletic. We're told there's no added time at the end of this first half. Here's Conor McCormick. Forrester and Forrester curled one that's a lovely try and hit the bar excellent effort by Chris Forrester close to his fourth goal of the season fantastic play here for Forrester just gets on it plays a little ball inside and goes and gets the return and just swings his left foot at it he knows what he's going for there it's a really good effort very unlucky and in fairness to Forrester he's got on the ball and he's tried to make things happen tonight but overall it just hasn't really happened as a team and he's the one player who has tried to be that little bit creative and he's very unlucky with that effort there. But I think overall, Liam Buckley can't have any real complaints coming at half time with his players. It'll be interesting to see what sort of frame of mind they come out in the second half and will they try and go and win the second half, should I say, that, that old cliche and make it respectable. Forward by McCormick. Just beyond Lynch this time though. We will now have one added minute at the end of this first half. Foreign's control. Lynch couldn't get it forward. Led with short. Here's David Corley. And Fahey brought him down. And Fahey will be booked. There can't be any complaint there. Just clips his ankles, goes over Corley. And referee is probably right to give a yellow card. Well, they're still keen, Sligo. It was a lovely passing move to try and set David Corley away and get something further before half time. Keith Fahey is the first player to go into the book and pretty much the first rash tackle of the game. Well, if it was boxing, they'd be throwing in the towel now. It's 5-0 to Sligo Rovers in aggregate. Joseph and Doe with a wonderful middle goal. The first and the third coming from Aaron Green. 3-0 at half-time to Sligo Rovers.
in Inchi Core in this second leg. 3 0 on the night, 5 0 in aggregate, and there's no way back for Pats now. St. Patrick's Athletic 0, Sligo Rovers 3. Welcome back. Well, it's been a great night so far for Sligo Rovers, coasting towards the first ever Satanta Sports Cup final. A depressing night so far for Pats. 3-0 down at home in Richmond Park, 5-0 down on aggregate in the tie. And Brian, we said beforehand, if Sligo were to get the first goal, that could be a tie over and it came after just 20 minutes. Yeah, well, Sligo have been superb in the attacking part of the pitch. Pats have been abysmal. This is typical. Um, McCormick here, not quite sure what he was doing, but look at how lazy Pats are about getting around. Derek Foden comes in after Green there. The build-up goes out to the right-hand side. Carly picks it up as will, at will, plays her in behind. And they just don't run with the players. Derek Ford and Ken O'Man and Larkin Fitzgerald, they're all over the place. It's just been abysmal by Pat's back four. But superb play, brilliant ball in from Delali. Little run around Green. He was involved in the move earlier on. This is like bread and butter stuff. Just a kick out. Mm. Breaks to David Carley here, off McCormick's head. Aaron Green picks this ball up. Again, look how slow anyone is reaction. Ken O'Man comes across. Joe and Doe is all the time in the world just outside at the edge of the box. And there's no, no Pats player, no Pats midfield player. Keith Ferry comes into the picture eventually mm -hmm. uh, and Ian Birmingham. But brilliant finish. Carly's ball over the top. They're standing waiting for an offside. We can't see by the line whether he's onside or not. But a very good finish. But look at the amount of time he has to play the ball. Derek Ford has his hand up, looking across the line. He doesn't, he doesn't sprint back to try and save the day. Mm. But, you know, you wonder how Sligo haven't been scoring regularly in the league because there's mm. been no bother for them creating chances tonight. Mm, that third goal really has summed up Pat's performance. As it just seems the body language is all wrong. And they're just well, if you pick a, pick a week and team, Sometimes that's what happens. And from the off, they haven't been good. There's been chance after chance after chance for Sligo. Yeah, we'll have a look at those chances. And Aaron Green, he's been superb in that first half, hasn't he, Brian? Been at the heart of everything. I, I, I think he's played really well. He's playing as the lead man, playing up front. But his movement, he's been moving out to the left. But again, Derek Ford loses possession. Carly shifts it quickly. Great ball across. Just misses and oh, coming in at the far post. But ju they're just quicker to it finding their men easier. Pat's not running with them quick enough. Here he turns Eric Ford and inside out, Aaron Green, and a great little ball inside. McCormick comes across and saves the day. Brilliant trickery, lovely feet, and a nice little ball into the box. Brendan Clark throws out a loose one. Karma comes in and gives it back to Aaron Green, and Pat's just about to survive it. Then the, the Brendan Clark saves Carly's shot. But how many clear cut opportunities to have, have Sligo had in the half. Pats yeah. on the other hand have had very little at the far end. Very little and they both came inside the first 10 minutes their best chances. The first one just after six minutes Keith Fahey with the shot easily saved. Yeah well Keith has tried to do a bit. He's been very very good on the ball and did. Nice little link up play here. Plays the one two. Not enough power on the shot to, to, to beat Rogers, but very good feet and he's been the one stringing passes together. A nice ball from quickly out to uh, McCormick here, gets the ball in the box, Gary Rogers doesn't do very well on this, a strange punch, Lee Lynch's header, an absolutely wonderful headed save for Mark Millen, doing a great defensive job, back in the line, Lee Lynch yeah. probably a little bit unlucky. More of the same obviously for Sligo Rovers, they're probably going to coast through the second half, Brian, if you're Liam Buckley, after you've lashed your players out of it, what are you looking for from them in the second half? I think you're looking for getting out of it with some sort of honour, uh, as uh, Damien said in the commentary. Can, can they come out without getting a hiding? Can they restore some bit of morale by getting a goal or two? But I think Liam's biggest worry will mm. be that Keith Fahey, um, Ian Birmingham in particular, don't get injuries before Friday night. I'd say those two players, he won't want him. Or Chris Forrester's another one. None of the back four tonight. I'd see them playing at the weekend against Bohemians on the performances in the half. OK, so as we said, Sligo Rovers at the moment easing comfortably into the Santa Sports Cup final. They're dancing their way to victory at Richmond Park. St Pat's need a miracle. They need five to stay alive. Welcome back. So Sligo Rovers leading 3-0 on the night, 5-0 on aggregate. There's been changes on both sides. Let's hear now from our commentators, Damien Lynch and first again, Will Downing. 
So two changes for St. Patrick's Athletic at halftime. Sean Hoare and Sam Verdon are coming on for Kenoman and Keith Fahey. Well, they find themselves 3-0 down in the night, 5-0 an aggregate to Sligo. And it is at this stage for the bitter red very very comfortable indeed they're making a change too they're bringing joseph and to protect him for the second half and replacing him with a man just re-signed from st patrick's athletic john russell so three changes at the break which considering realistically there's nothing at stake for the next 45 minutes it's just really for both sides to avoid injury and to get over the line Everybody to get out of the game in one piece, realistically. 5-0 for Sligo Rovers. That's on aggregate, 3-0 on the night. And there's no point saying what would be needed to turn that around. Sligo and Blue playing from left to right in this second half. And finally, they're on their way to winning a semi-final in this competition. It's with Alan Keane. Good ball spread wide for Ross Gaynor. He's got four waiting in the middle. Gaynor still going, needed a block and got it. But we got the spectacular as well. Nice try by Danny Ledwith. Overhead kick expected and stopped by Clark. Great technique from Ledwith there. But I think overall Gaynor gets on the ball. Great feet, just cuts inside Forrester there. But I think this isn't going to be the only game, Will, where... Oh, good chance here. Does well for him. But as I was going to say, was this isn't the only chance where our time of the season where both these sides will be competing for something important. And I think that's the key to this game now in the second half is to basically, for Pats to get back into it in some shape, shape or form and certainly not concede any more goals because we're going to see another time later in the season when they're going to come head to head and there can be that mental battle as well you have to overcome. Well, it was a good break by Gaynor. Slipped past Chris Forrester, and the technique was superb, and the idea was to... Clark saw it coming. So Paris Athletic's heaviest defeat in this competition was a 3-0 away loss to Cliftonville in 2011. They haven't lost at home in this competition by three goals. Sligo have had two 5-0 wins. Absolutely fantastic closing down there from Sligo again though. Pats literally have nowhere to go, they're closing down in groups and they're not letting them out at all and it looks like they've come out in the second half and the Barrow Club has said to them, let's get more here because they're really starting the second half very well, getting in, closing down, closing the space down and making it difficult for St. Pats. Well previously in this competition Sligo have had five wins of at least a three goal margin two of them were five nils and they've all been against northern opposition and they date back to 2010. there have been a couple of northern winners of this competition and infield and glen torn were very strong in the first few years and crusaders were great champions in 2012 led by stephen baxter but i think there is a bit of a gulf irrespective of the disinterest of the two title challengers in the Irish Premiership in taking part in this season's competition. I think there is a little bit of a goal fall, right, Will, but at times, any game of football, when teams are coming into a tired, you can build up a good score, particularly when the League of Ireland teams are that little bit fresher. But you look tonight, and the, you wouldn't think that there's two of the, these two t are probably two of the best teams in the country, and there is a massive gulf between them on the night. Now, that can happen in football, and... You don't move, lose sleep over, you move on and you, you, you just get on with the next game. But I do think, as you say, there is that little... When you look at all the games aggregated together, there does seem to be that little bit of a gap between the, the southern sides and the northern sides. 131 times north and south have met. League of Ireland clubs have won 74 times, northern teams 28. That includes the first ever final in 2005. 
great night, full house in Tolka. Fantastic game that night, wasn't it? It was a lot of passion, really meant something. And you look at that, and I think that's that, that from a player's perspective, really good chance here, good ball over. But from a player's perspective, Will, it's a great upper, it's a great competition to play in because you're playing against teams if, that you don't normally play against. You know, in the League of Ireland, they can become a little bit re repetitive because it's four times you play each other. And when you go up to North and you play in the likes of Linfield and great stadiums and a bit of atmosphere and that, you know. So from a player's perspective, it's really enjoyable competition to play in. And I think over the last couple of years, certainly if, even when I was playing, the, the league medal meant a lot for you. The, the cup medal, should I say. Well, Ian Barraclough during his time in charge has guided Sligo to both the League of Ireland and the FAI Cup. Now he has them on their way to their first ever Satanta Sports Cup final. At the fifth time of asking, Dal Kavanagh complaining because he was away and clear and not given the advantage. I think that's a very important factor tonight, Will, in the second half near that nobody gets sent off from the same pass perspective. You're 5-0 down, frustrated. It's very easy to kick out at someone. Not that I'd ever done that in my day, but very easy to do. And I think you'd be suspended for two or three games off the back of that then. So I think a bit of patience. You just have to take the defeat and just get on with it and learn from it. <laughs> Jalali fighting hard with Derek Foran. Here's Fitzgerald. Little flick by Quigley, tried to get it through, but a recurring theme for the team in red tonight, no joy. build up. <clears throat> you look at Fitzgerald, he's just gone into the middle of the park to sit in front of the back four to try and consolidate in there. Birmingham's dropped into the left back now and Kavanagh's come out into the left wing. So a slight change from Liam Buckley's team. I think that's just to consolidate and make sure they don't concede more goals. So Sam Burden has been on the bench for three league games this season. He was on the bench for the first time against the old Salt Hill Devon in the League Cup last season but he gets his Big run out, his debut. And 45 minutes to impress manager Liam Buckley. They just try and consolidate, shore things up in the second half and try and make sure it doesn't get worse for them. Sligo can only try and ensure for them it just gets better. They're on their way to their best ever result against the League of Ireland club in this competition. Haven't won a league game since that 2-1 home win over Athlone. They've conceded exactly one goal in every game in the league so far this season. The Athlone one was the only one they won. Quigley was almost in there. And look who's back to flick it away on the edge of his own area. But Jalali. Bit sloppy play there in the middle of the park. Lynch gets on it, just drives forward, plays, tries to place Quigley in, but Jalali, in fairness to him, gets his leg in there. Really good defending. But Will, it's a really important point you made there. Sligo will want a clean sheet tonight. 
I can guarantee you, Ian Barclough said that at half time. He says, whatever we do, we come out of here with a clean sheet. Do not concede a goal. Corner was dealt with quickly and it's been thumped away swiftly also by Ledwith. That's the one thing about having the second leg at home. It's all well and good as long as you don't concede an away goal early on. And they did. They say Padre Sovletic and carried on conceding. Theoretically, it makes sense. But then you concede. Nightmare. A lot of the time, it makes sense. Well, Keane is... Lots of space on this near side, but couldn't be found. Gaino is instead, and it will be a... Sligo throw. Keane's made a break towards the far post, but that was too close towards the near and easily claimed by Brendan Clark. Have been a litany of games in Europe. Quite famous games where teams have lost away the first leg 2 0 and come back to win the second 3 0. Liverpool did it against Saint Etienne and Auxerre and Manchester United against Barcelona in 84 and against Olympiacos a few weeks ago. Didn't exactly help them in the quarterfinals, mind you, but they still made it an extra round. Nice opportunity for Verdon coming on here, making his debut. There's not much in the game, really. He has a chance to get on the ball, try and make something happen. And if, he, if at the end of the day, no one's going to hold anything against him this evening. So there's no real pressure on him. He can get on the ball and do well. Work his way into the game, get used to playing at this level, because when you're playing against a team like Sligo, that's the pace you have to get up to. And sometimes you don't realise that when you're sitting on a bench or a young lad coming through. And it's great experience to get out there and play against some of the top players in the league. Well controlled by Evan McMillan. And the 1-2 completed with Green. Sliced clearance in the end from Sean Hall. One of those two changes at half-time for St. Pat's. Now on by Sam Bird. Here's Kavanagh. Chance to take on Keane. Not his night, not Pat's night. And he's talked himself into trouble here. Daryl Kavanagh. Responded too adversely to Derek Tomney, and there will be a yellow card for that. And, well, the frustration is there. I have to make sure it doesn't advance. That's the frustrating thing for me in Buckley's perspective now. Yellow card, what's the point on it? You know, just get on with it. It was, I don't know what he's actually complaining about here. Maybe it wasn't. He's never going to run Keane in the first place here, and he's had a bit of a bite. I think he's, he's really hurting. It does slightly come off O'Connor here when it goes out, and it possibly should be a Pat's throw, but it's easy saying up here that he should just relax and not take the, not basically get get booked, but what's the point on it this when you're 3 0 down? Pats did have a throw in the end, which they managed to win, but gave away, and they'll. Try and advance it again from here. Controlled by Hoare. Collingwood Cup winner this year. Brendan Clark and Jero O'Brien involved with the tremendous success. Had a decent final as well. It was an all NUI battle between Maynooth and Galway. Pats with uh, close links to the Maynooth setup. Forward by Lynch. It's gathered back again by John Russell here. Sligo try and make a move once more. They'll finally have a taste of cup final football in this competition. Sligo have a free kick in a decent advanced position too. O'Connor brought down. Quigley tried to latch on. It was 
well marshaled by Kalen Spillan. Good signing for Sligo. I thought he was excellent for Cork City the past couple of years. Came in from the youth ranks down Lee side. Well, Came out of Carrigal Line originally. I was surprised they let him go, Will. You know, local lad, you're thinking he should, he's been excellent for Cork. Why would he, why would he want to leave Cork? Probably, the, in my opinion, probably got in trouble for saying this, they're probably the biggest soccer town in the, or city in the, in, the, in, the, in the country. And you can see Turner's Cross now rocking every week, getting four and 5,000 people turning up to matches. Great signing from Sligo's perspective, though. Well, in the league, quite a few clubs are getting great crowds, and Cork are one of those. And I was talking to uh, Limerick's PR manager at halftime, and they're hoping for a bumper crowd at Thurman Park on Friday night. It's Good Friday, remember. There's not much else to do. I remember a Bowes and Rovers Good Friday match in Dalymouth, I think 9,000, 10,000 turned up to it. Maybe six or seven years ago. Yeah, had his progress stalled in the end. I actually remember a good Friday, good few years ago now, maybe seven, eight years ago, where Bray played in the afternoon on Good Friday and all the other matches around the capital run in the evening so you could take in two matches if you wanted to and they got a fantastic crowd Sligo haven't taken the pace out of the game yet have they when you look at it they've come out and they've actually they look like they're really up for trying to get more more goals here obviously they'll have to defend this but there looks like a bit of aggression in them and really want to kick, kick on and maybe get another goal Played in by Birmingham. It's a solid header away. Picked up by Fitzgerald now. Pats have kept a lot forward. It's with Forrester. It's cut away by Ledwith. Sligo of a few men up here. It's controlled by Paul O'Connor, the recent signing from Drogheda. Reached all three domestic cup finals last season beaten at all of them but they did win the league cup the season before there's Kavanagh now here's Verdon finds Daryl Kavanagh Kavanagh's got support out wide it's Birmingham chance for the first time cross and he whipped it in well three queuing up for it fell for Verdon in the end and he couldn't quite get it away the Pats are putting pressure on at the very least, trying to deny a Sligo clean sheet and at most trying to dig as much out of the hole as they can while knowing they're never going to get out of this one. It's a much better play there though, moving the ball quickly, fullbacks getting around, decent ball in for Birmingham there, and Verdon just takes that touch a little bit too long. It was a difficult chance from good covering from Sligo, but could he have taken a first time or possibly getting out of his feet just that little bit quicker? Been a good concerted spell of pressure from St. Patrick's Athletic and it fell right at the end for Sam Verdon. Great chance to score a debut goal. Good chance for Pats for a free kick situation here. It's a low drive in the end. Quigley couldn't make much progress that time. What about this? It's Lee Lynch playing it out wide. Connor McCormick. Well, top scorer in the competition this season. With four, Danny North is going to come on for Aaron Green who's got a brace himself today. 
and who's put himself up to three goals into the Satanta Sports Cup this season. They're the top scorers overall. It has rained goals for them this campaign. They got nine in the last round against Crusaders and five here against Pats, 14 in total. Cross was deep. It was a good cross as well. Headed away by Ross Gaynor. Last five meetings between these two. Three wins for St. Paolo Soletic, one draw, and that 2 0 first leg victory for Sligo. They did score three against St. Pat's at the end of the 2012 season on their way to League Glory, but Pat's did score twice. Game where Mark Quigley scored very, very late on from the spot. Last time Sligo got a result like this against St. Pat's, a three-goal margin in the 2010 League Cup. Jalali had a pop into the crowd, but Sligo aren't content with what they have. Decent effort there. Jalali just picks it up and he could possibly play the ball outside him. There's an overlap there, but he cuts inside. He just lets fly with his left foot. He's pro everyone's probably saying now, can I get on the score sheet? Great opportunity to have a few sort of efforts that you possibly wouldn't have. And that one just goes over the top from Jalali, but really good play cutting inside. It's good closing there from Sligo again. Don't let them out the open side of the pitch, making it difficult for them. And overall, as an overall unit, they've closed in groups tonight again. They're forced the error from Foran, and they get on the ball. Exquisite ball wide, North got involved. Cabinet. Well, that's an excellent combination up front for St. Paris Athletic. Here's Lee Lynch, cutting inside, letting loose, and scoring an absolute corker. How about that? They have one on the board, and it was an absolute peach from Lee Lynch. Absolutely fantastic play there. Birmingham getting on the overlap, plays a really clever ball back in. I actually thought he took too long there. Just gets it out of his feet, let's fly. What a strike. Gary Rogers has absolutely no chance there. And I think that's what we can see, Lee Lynch. He's, well, he's got that in his locker. I don't think it's probably been the best game from tonight. Or even in the first leg, he struggled at times. But he can really turn the game on its head, you know, with, with the quality he has. And it looks like he'd actually overran it there. But just to get it out of his feet, let's fly. And Rogers really has no chance whatsoever. His fourth all time goal in the competition, his second this season, having netted in the. Uh, 3-1 away win at Bray in the league. That was a fantastic goal. If I'm in Barraclough, I'm fuming. My clean sheet is gone now. The one thing he probably wanted out of the second half. Forward by Jalali, excellent ball, and it's Danny North to hold it up. 
Driven strike in the end from O'Connor, which had the sting taken out of it. St. Paris have led it one, Sligo Rovers three on the night. Sligo lead 5-1 on aggregate. been at least 20 years and Sligo have come here and scored this many. Almost released Forrester that time did Cavanagh. They have looked perkier up front in this second half by far. They have but I suppose it wasn't too hard to improve on the first half. Um, well as you said like is it 20 years since this got scoreline? Like, it, can, it will really hurt Liam Buckley tonight at home and you lose 3-0 like this particularly over when you look put in the aggregate score it even becomes more embarrassing but it's the manner in which you're losing games Everyone's, everyone loses games and you get on with that you know break of a ball someone gets sent off bad refereeing decision or if it's, a, if it's a world class finish you get on with it but when their team doesn't really turn up over the two legs that's disappointing and that will worry Liam Buckley I don't think it's the end of the world and they will recover from it but at the same time you're looking at after winning the league and then you're saying to yourself is there a bit of hunger in the dressing room again and you, you start the season great ball oh there could be another it is it's an own goal by Derek Foran and for St. Patrick's Athletic it goes from bad to even worse if possible Sligo scored a fourth it's six in aggregate and the hole gets deeper it's really good play there from Sligo can get it on I don't know why Derek Foran, he, he seems to be late running in towards the goal trying to clear that. Instead, he should be dropping off when he sees the ball going wide and coming onto it and clearing with his right foot. I don't understand why he's actually got his facing the goal when the ball comes in. It's actually poor positional play there and he should, he should just drop off, anticipate the cross and clear it. He's had happier birthdays, Liam Buckley. 4-1 down at home on the night, 6-1 in aggregate. They did have a gap to bridge in this second leg, having lost the first 2-0 in Sligo, but he wasn't expecting this. with the goal there as well Will there's no one actually putting any pressure on Foran and I'm wondering could Clark have called him and said just to leave it and let the ball I know there was a, a slight player at the back post but it looked like there was cover there and it just seemed to like a bit of a panic clearance instead of just a little bit of composure get in position clear the ball or certainly Clark let the ball run through and pick it up training game now for Sligo just getting the ball out from the back Rogers out to the full backs moving it that's just playing it across the back here running down the clock record away win in the competition by the way was when Cork City scored seven at Portadown in 2007 Sligo were a long way off that Be fair, the crowd here have stayed here. Oh, 
It's played out wide. Jalali just beyond him. I do think those watching from the apartments behind the shed end have shuffled in for the night, though. A few of the Pats players want, probably want to go home at half time as well. Cavan. Played a short in for Forrester. Tied up for Forrester again. They've had a couple of good moves in the game. Managed to score an absolute peach back from Lee Lynch, but then the own goal. Glorious night for Sligo Rovers, no doubting that. And they're hoping to recapture that in the league. UCD at home. Coming up next weekend, then back in Dublin, away against Bowes, away against Limerick, who are here on a scouting mission tonight. <laughs> Four. Short for Quigley. Trying to find a way past McMillan that time, but blocked well by the former Irish Colleges International. Kavanagh, thumping strike, good save by Gary Rogers. Now they're looking for more themselves. Rogers beaten just the once tonight. Does well to create a bit of space for himself there, just drops the shoulder, lets the ball run past him. Doesn't quite catch it like Lee Lynch did, straight into Rogers' hands, and he'd be disappointed with that. He was only 18, 19 yards out there. Kevin, I've seen him score them in the past. He was just trying to find the far corner and bend it into the top bin. Well, both sides are going to make uh, changes now. And for St. Paris Athletic, it's Forrester off and it's Marco Chindea on. That's a debut as well. Chance to give him a run also. And Jilali is also going off to be replaced by the man who scored a hat-trick against Crusaders on his debut, Eric Odiambo, the recent signing from Hereford United. What's a man to be able to bring on with 13 minutes to go? And it's the contacts of Ian Barraclough and Gary Stevens that they've managed to secure such decent players from the Football League in England. Adiambo was key to the first leg when he came on. Slip north through. Great player, a lot of experience to be bringing on at this stage. But again, as we said, Will, it's probably gone over all ground here, but the squad that Sligo have, they really need to be challenging this year in all competitions. And they've actually become tonight, by scoring four, the third highest scorers all time in the competition behind Cork City and Linfield. They've got 45 overall. In this competition, Pats have never had a night like this. Lynch trying to play it forward, cut out by Danny Ledwith. It's a bit of a chop on McCormick. Free kick for Pats over in the far corner. 12 minutes to go. McCormick looking to take. Got a good delivery, thumping header away by McMillan. Lynch. Free kick to Sligo. 10th of May is when Sligo Rovers will be playing in the Satanta Sports Cup final. And Ian Barraclough did say that he wasn't worried about how Sligo were playing in the league, despite the fact they'd only won one of their seven games this season. He said they'd always played well, and that a performance like this was always going to be around the corner. And they've got around the corner now. They've scored four. At least four for the third time this season. It's always been in this competition. Come on, come on. 
Pumped away by Gaynor. Good control by Danny North. Great work by Evan McMillan. Try to go all the way. Good flick on. Marvellous save, but the rebound's in by John Russell. And Russell finds the net. The hits just keep on coming. It's five. Great ball in from North here. Flick at the front post by McMillan. And you look there, there's actually four past defenders standing around. And the Sligo man just finishes it off there. But I think that just sums it up. Great play by McMillan. Even leading up to that, he gets on the ball the halfway line and actually steps in. It's not something I've seen him doing a lot. Very comfortable. Drop past a couple of people. Tries to have a shot. Gets, wins the corner. And ends up creating a goal from his flick on. So Paddock's Athletic 1, Sligo Rovers 5 on the night and Russell scores his second all-time goal. It's a scoring return for Russell to Inchicore. Yes, yes. Scored the opening goal in the 2-1 home win against Athlone. Forward by Verdon. Well, what a night to make your debut for him and Chindea from Romania. And it gives them first team experience at the very least in a major cup semi final. One that they'll want to forget very quickly around these parts, mind you. Put up by North. Here's Keane, and the challenge yields a free kick from Birmingham. So on his way to his second Satanta Sports Cup final, Joey and Doe, who featured on the bench for Shelburne in the first final in 2005, when they lost to Linfield. And the Blues are beating the Reds here as well tonight. And Ndo has not been involved in a final apart from that. Well, he will be this year. Sligo have been comprehensive and there's still eight minutes to go. They'd only scored four goals in seven league games before this. Five tonight, seven in aggregate. But it's the manner in which they came to play as well, Will. They got on the ball, they came out. And it was even their closing down. It's not necessarily get, them, get the passing that they've done, but and they've been fantastic at that tonight. Another opportunity here. Well, the Ambo plays it through. Russell with the support play. It's Danny North. It's off the line, but the flag is up for offside anyway. Sean Hall reacted quickly, but it wouldn't have counted anyhow. Besides the goals, that's how many chances have they had to actually score? It could be seven, eight here tonight, and it's really good play, but. North, I'm looking here, just puts it behind Clark, and it's good defending in the end, and he's just that yard offside. But getting back to Sligo, they came here two goals up, and people are saying, should you sit off? But they actually, you saw in the interview before the game at Barra Club, who says, we want to come here and do well. And he actually, they actually came out, closed down from the word go, and they were intent on winning this game, no matter what. 2-0 lead to defend, I said. We're not going to defend, he said, and he was spot on. They've got five. They could never slag of imagine it would have been as good as this. It's either Dundalk or Shamrock Rovers in the final for them on the 10th of May.
venue to be deliberated on. We had a great semi-final up there in 2012 between Sligo and Crusaders. There's never been a final played in the Northwest before. Wonder if this year there's a chance. Launched forward by Gaynor. It's forward by Lynch. And they were a game the first 15 minutes of the second half pass. They did get a breakthrough for them through Lee Lynch. A couple of good opportunities in the second period, but back to normal for Sligo in terms of tonight. Got two since conceding. Got three before that. And you even see the hunger there to close down from Odiambos. Come on the park. He wants to get on the ball. He wants to score a goal all over the park. And when you are winning like this, it's, it's everybody wants the ball. Everybody wants to score that goal. I remember when I was playing in the in the the, the four one game here, where Pats beat them four, beats Ligo four one. And I remember on the night, you're actually shocked at the score line, and you're saying to yourself, "I just want to get the ball and try and score a goal." And everyone's playing with that bit of confidence. Keen dispossessed by Kavanagh, who still got the determination to have his head held high at the end of the night. There were still five between him and the goal, but at least he's won a free kick. Wasn't much in that. Good decision with the referee, it was a free kick. North receiving from Adi Amba. Keane again and lost of space down this right hand side. Spillan launched long but into no man's land. Well, we're over at Dundalk, 8 p.m. tomorrow night for their semi-final second leg against Shamrock Rovers. Up next, Premier League Central at 10:15. All of the weekend highlights, but it's been a big highlight for Sligo tonight. Who's man of the match then? I think coming into the game, you're looking for match winners and you're saying who, who's the one who's going to make the difference and you're looking at Pat's players and thinking that they're going to have a bit of an impact tonight, but it has to be a Sligo player and I think Aaron Green, overall, his willingness to run, get on the ball, try and make things happen and he's finished his chances ex exceptionally well and he's the man of the match this evening. He scored twice of Sligo's five, and Aaron Green is the man of the match. Given his handball against Erica Diambo. Well, it's been an impressive scoring run in this competition. Sligo have scored 16 goals in four games. They'd like a little bit of that in the league. Be guaranteed going into their game at the weekend now in the league, they'll all be up for it, all wanting to play, and it can really breed a bit of confidence into the dressing room. And they do need it because it hasn't been the start of the season that they want. And it gets them an appearance in the first cup final of the season. I was on always uh, going to be a bit of an ask for St. Pat's to bridge that two goal gap from the first leg, but they were up for it. Sligo were up that bit more. Here's Kavanagh. Worked hard to try and draw Keane and get the cross in, and he did. Good try, and it came off the crossbar. Looked from Lynch. And on the ball now. Good chance. They could have had a few more tonight, Pats. Wouldn't have made any difference to the 
overall storyline. Cabinet done exceptionally well there, just dropped drop back, squares the ball, and Lynch just hits the bar. He'd be disgusted. Really good effort though. Nice think, lovely try. He actually moves his feet very well there. And I think that's when we look at Lee Lynch. He's, he is, as I've said already, a young talent in the league. And he can pull that out. You can see his goal from 25 yards and then that chance. It's out of nothing that he can create something. Hasn't quite worked from this evening. Almost another effort has come off the bar. Very nice try. Lynch giving it a couple of very good goes here. Pat's aiming for another and Kavanaugh well off target in the end. It's cleared the stadium. Well, two chances here at the target. Twice off Lynch. Couple of nice tries. Two added minutes we'll have. Just caught Rogers out there. He was looking for a cross there. Comes off his foot, overstretched it. Rogers is in no man's land, just dips in under him. Ball comes back to Kavanagh and puts it over the bar. And I suppose Kavanagh's shot there will kind of sum up St. Pat's evening. Disappointing. No real precision about it and overall I think Sligo have been extremely impressive this evening May 10th is the next red letter day in the diary for Sligo Rovers. They will face St. Pat's again before then. be the week before the Satanta Cup final and the 3rd of May. Sligo were due to visit a flown the night before but they won't anymore and that's another good try. It's Ian Birmingham shot which is saved by Gary Rogers. Birmingham does well here, picks it up, just cuts inside, lets fly his right foot, wouldn't he renowned us? Scoring many with his right foot, but it's a good effort from. And that's that. Sligo Rovers by scoring five in the night, seven in aggregate, qualify for the Satanta Sports Cup final. It's the third time they've scored five in the competition. It's their biggest win over a League of Ireland side in the Satanta Sports Cup. It's Pat's record defeat. And it's the third highest away win of all time. And it's the second heaviest defeat that the League of Ireland club have suffered. All the records apart, two for Aaron Green, one each for Joseph and Doe and John Russell. An own goal by Derek Foran, five for Sligo. A great goal back for Pat from Lee Lynch and he hit the bar twice as well. All in vain though. The final score on the night, St. Patrick's Athletic one, Sligo Rovers five and Sligo win 7-1 on aggregate. Sligo Rovers cruise really into the Satanta Sports Cup final with a 7-1 aggregate win over St. Pat's, 5-1 on the night. Brian, just give us your take on just how good Sligo were tonight and just how abject, I think, is the only word really you could describe Pat's in particularly the first half. Well, I think uh, Sligo Rovers, their attitude was, was, was excellent right from the off in the match and the performance was superb. And I'm sure Ian Barraclough was very, very pleased. I was hoping that they can convert the, um, the chances that they're getting in the league similar to the, how they scored tonight. Yeah. And I, I mean, they, they have been making lots of opportunities in the league form, but they They've had four 1-0 defeats, so obviously they haven't been able to get a goal when they've needed one. Tonight, uh, they, they were creating chances and scoring almost at will. And Pats were abysmal. A night, a night to be forgotten for St. Pats. And they'll skip on. I'm sure Liam is disappointed. And some of the fringe players that got a chance tonight didn't do themselves any uh, great favour in terms of, the, of demanding a starting place for the match of Bohemians on Friday night. But he'd be looking at that saying... 
you know, move on now, get my best team prepared for Friday, but, but, but certainly Sligo, great boost to them, given how difficult the, the early part of the season has been. Mm, you mentioned Sligo's lack of goals so far, and a quirky thing tonight is that they've actually scored more goals tonight than they've scored in seven league matches so far, five tonight and, and four only in the league. Here's the first one after 20 minutes, Brian. Yeah, well, look, they were at it from the off. You see led with picking it up here. Joe and Doe gives them a bit of a hand. But look, no Pats player comes into the pitcher to make a challenge. Little flick around the corner at Maren Green. It's all very leisurely by Pats, no great effort to get close to the ball, call a superb pass in behind the defender, Lachlan Fitzgerald, cross into the box and a lovely finish. So Aaron Green didn't stop when he had played that little flick to call, he gets it out to Alan Keane, then being in behind for Jalali. You see Green making the blindside run, the back of Forden who didn't see him and he sticks her in the net. Second one is a soft goal defensively. McCormick goes in to win the header, doesn't get it. And this is the centre forward, Aaron Green, strokes it down the line, running behind the defence, cut back from Ledwich, Joe and Doe, plenty of time to smack her into the net. But lovely weight on the pass, lets the Ledwich get there, nice link up play, and brilliant finish from Joe and Doe. He doesn't score that many goals this, this time. Joe the third goal for Sligo really summed up Pats and how poor they yeah, defended. The, the back four were all over the place tonight. You know, they just weren't in, weren't in, in the line, weren't reading each other. The, the communication wasn't there. And I think Brendan Clark had a difficult night. He wasn't getting an awful lot of cover. But again, another brilliant finish from Aaron Green. Mm. They lost Keith Fahey at half-time, took a bit of a knock on the first half, Pats. You know, when you look at the players, they were missing players like Bulger, Brennan, O'Brien, Chambers, and players on the bench that didn't come on, like Conan Byrne and, and Christy Fagan. I suppose that kind of puts it in perspective. And you were making the point that the message maybe that Liam Buckley put out to his team yeah. by playing a week in team tonight. a manager, in, in particular games, if it's not the top league games, it's some mm. other competition. You see it off in British football, all sorts of football, and mm. you leave out some of your key players. It mm. gives the rest of the players a message that the match isn't that important to the manager and when you look at the Sligo team tonight apart from uh, Spillane coming in centre back it was the same team that started in, Cor in Cork so that showed the attitude of the manager to the tie he wanted to bring out his, almost his best team maybe the best team he could have whereas with Pats it was a little bit half and half I'll keep some of them back for yeah. Friday night yeah, the only very uh, trivial um, consolation for St. Pat's is their goal came with the best strike of the night, Lee, Lee Lynch, after 68 minutes. Yeah, and he hadn't really got going in the match, Lee. When he's played, he's looked impressive uh, in, in the bits and matches that he's, he, he's played this season. And he, But he, he was part of midfield that was outplayed in the first half. It was lovely build-up play down the left-hand side. You see Birmingham getting involved again. Lee Lynch got a lot of time, but he made space and time, moved it shifted the ball away from Ledgewood here. He's looking up, he's seeking can he get there, can he get a bit of space, and then he booms it into the corner. Beautiful finish by Gary Rogers. But it, it was out of sync with most of Matt Pat's <laughs> play, you'd have to say, in the night. This was more typical of Sligo. Great link up down the left-hand side. Again, look how much time Ledgewood gets to play the ball into the box. No real threat to Derek Forden, but he stretches... His, his position, as Damien said in commentary, should have been a bit better. And maybe Brendan Clark should have been saying, leave it, I'll go uh, out and get it. Ian Birmingham going back into the pitcher. Another sloppy one here. Brilliant flick on the near post by McMillan. Brendan Clark probably saw it very, very late indeed, but nice reaction by Russell to tuck it into the net. And uh, there you go, five. But um, I think Will said it was a record a fee for Pats. Maybe in this competition, I lost one one night five nothing, Stephen. I, I, most people have forgotten about it, but I didn't. <laughs> Still a little bit sore, Brian. Well, uh, he only played for an hour in the match, Aaron Green, but he did enough in that to earn Damien Lynch's pick as man of the match. Let's hear from the Sligo Rovers forward now. Well, talk about an absolute thumping. That was uh, a fantastic away win. Yeah, brilliant. We've um, had a few. Good, good performances now over the last few weeks, and to come here and win is um, is very good. So, stand up final, something that you're always looking forward to. It'll be my set, uh, tour now, looking to go and win it. So, it's great for the lads to come here. It's not an easy place for us to win park, and we're just delighted. And it will be Sligo's first, and it was helped by two goals from yourself. Yeah, well, every time that we play, the wingers always. I'm usually playing on the left, so every time we always play, the wingers obviously balls in the box so that's what the manager want me to do I played up there against Cork on Friday night and had a few chances was disappointed not to score but came here tonight and we have um, 
put a very good performance in and it's not only me, it's myself, Joseph, everyone. The whole team have came here tonight. Not an easy place to come to and to come here and win. So we'll just get our feet up now and look forward to Friday against UCD. Absolutely. And I mean, a chance to kick on perhaps in the league because as everyone in Sligo has kept telling us the performances have been good, it's just the results haven't been. Yeah, they have been. It's scary because this time last year we weren't playing so well, but we were eight games unbeaten. And this year we're playing better, but we're not getting the results. But no, it's definitely coming. Went to Cork and conceded a sloppy late goal. A home to draw it the week before. Now we've came, we've came here and shown what we could do, and hopefully we can just kick on to Friday and then, of course, the Santa Cup final that we've, of course, we've, it's like I've never been to one, so it's um, be one that will be relishing. I'm sure every every other player will be too. Well, here's a, a little present for the night. You are the Santa Sports Cup man of the match. Thank you. And here's Milo Corkin with it. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Well done. Thank you. Brian, obviously with Aaron winning man of the match, he, he was central to all the good things about Sligo tonight. Oh yeah, I thought he had a great game. Right from the off, in the very first moments of the game, he was in behind the Pats defence, he cut a ball back across the goal that John Doe didn't quite get to. That's the one there, right? That was in the first three minutes of the game. There he makes a little interception through a three of possession uh, for Carly to have the shot here. Tidy little pass in behind and his link with Ledwood in the wide position. And he was just all over it and he'd done his work by the time he'd gone on. And the, the early goals are the key in the match, so he, he's a deserved winner, I think. OK, well, he must be a very happy man. Let's hear from the Sligo Rovers manager, Ian Barraclough. So, Ian, that was quite comprehensive. You were surely expecting a night like this would come along. That's been coming for a few weeks, and um, what it will do for the boys' belief and confidence be enormous. Um, to, to play like we did, to create chances, to finish chances. That's what's been coming the last few weeks, apart from the last bit. When you went 1-0 up, you could easily have just taken the foot off the pedal and said, well, Pats have to score four and they won't do it, but you kept going, you kept plugging, you didn't stop. No, they couldn't. They couldn't. They're not allowed to because it's, it, it's being drilled into them, the professionalism, um, and go and enjoy games like that where you can actually go and express yourself and do the right things. And if you keep it simple, you keep the ball moving well, you will create chances. No clean sheet, though. No, that's annoying me because at half-time I said, whatever we do, we'll come away with a clean sheet. And, um, yeah, that's annoying. Because they're them little one goals that we're giving away that has cost us games in the in the last few league games. Tenth of May, look forward to it. Put it on the back burner now. It's back to points. Brian, from the two managers' point of view, Pat's now at home to Bowes. I suppose tonight just wipe the slate clean, get back on the rails against Bowes, and from Sligo, very important match now at home to to UCD as the next one. To see, be seen to kick on from tonight. Yeah, well, they've only got five points from seven games. As Aaron Graham mentioned there, they actually won the four state games last year. So they're on eight, three, 24 points from eight games. They're in a sticky position as regards having a league challenge. Normally, you're looking at having at least 20 points in the section of 11 games. So yeah. for to get up anywhere near that, they need to win the last four matches in the section. Yeah. Now, they're capable of doing that, but one of the games will be against St. Pat's and it'll be a totally different type of tie, I'd say. It'll be a much closer match than tonight but you saw their ability saw the potential and uh, there was so 